emerged. A global pandemic, growing national unrest, and a contentious political divide. Added to the regular stresses of life are taking their toll on people everywhere. Even pastors are overwhelmed and weary, and some are throwing in the towel. William Vanderbloom, founder of Vanderbloom, the largest Christian executive search firm, is here now to discuss this perfect storm and give us a little hope, we hope. Welcome to the show, William. Thanks so much for having me. It's a joy to be with you. Well, being a pastor is already a difficult job. How has this year, 2020, put some pastors and a lot of us over the edge? Well, I, uh, I'll try not to ramble. I'm a recovering preacher. <laughs> but uh, having had the job, I've joked with a lot of pastors, you know, aren't we all glad we took that class in seminary on leading through a pandemic? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, I'm very weary of the word unprecedented, but it's been a bizarre year. And as you stated earlier, it's just a perfect storm. Any one of these three things alone would be hard enough. But when you combine the civil unrest that's been going on with a very contentious election and a pandemic that just seems to be like the Energizer Bunny, it, it's really stressed a lot of people out to a point that is uh, making some people rethink their careers. You know, and I, I really feel for a lot of pastors who might not be that tech savvy because they've been forced to go online with their services. And uh, that can add a lot of stress um, as well as exhaustion. Do you think stress and exhaustion uh, are another pandemic among pastors? I think so. And I think a big part of it, you know, some pastors are introverted, some are extroverted. But you know, if you look at the creation narrative, the very first thing that you hear God say that's bad the very first curse he issues, the very first negative commentary he gives is he says, you know, it is not good for people to be left alone. Mm. And, and pastors who love to be on the front lines and a minister, I mean, think about the things that make a pastor's job. There's praying with people by laying on hands. Right. There's worshiping together and singing. There are all these things that for uh, the health of others and for extreme caution, we've just had to say no to for a while. And, and I think pastors are realizing it is not good for us to be left alone. So, mm -hmm. so I know everyone wants to be careful and wants to open with enough caution that we don't spread a, a disease or cause someone to get sick. I think, though, people are getting tired of the isolation. Yeah. You know, one, one theologian that I uh, respect greatly says, you know, hell is God's granting of our final wish to be left alone. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I think we're starting to discover what being alone feels like. Ouch, yeah. Well, what can church members do? What can we do to help our pastors during this time? I'll give you one really specific thing you can do. Send them a note of encouragement mm. on Monday. <laughs> so, so we help churches find their pastor. We help Christian schools find their headmaster. But we help churches find their pastor is, is kind of the backbone of our work. And invariably, people will reach out to us and say, you know, I'm thinking maybe my time here is done. You know what? If you took all the, the notes I get like that and added up all the notes I get on Tuesday through Sunday, they're not as many as I get on Monday. Pastors mm -hmm. are depressed on Mondays. They've done everything they can on Sunday. And if they're just talking to a camera, they don't even know if they're getting through. So if you want to do one tangible thing, it's send a note on a Monday. And if you really want to go the extra mile, send a handwritten note in the regular mail on Friday or Saturday so it arrives on Monday. I have a file folder from when I was a pastor. I called it my Barnabas folder, my encouragement folder. I stuck every one of those notes in there and kept them, and I pulled them out on Mondays and read them all the time. Oh, wow. That is so encouraging. I, I know what you mean. I do the same thing. Well, you say there is a surprising future for the church after this pandemic. Tell us about that. Well, I think that we're going to see a churn. Uh, you know, it, it, forget the pandemic and the bad things that have caused us to have to sit still. Many, many times pastors in a good season will take a sabbatical or a season off to rest and they reflect and they come back and they decide it's time for a change. I don't think that's because they dislike where they are. I just think humans uh, love routine and get caught in routine. And any time a break in the routine happens, it gives us time to reflect and say, what am I really called to? Mm. Well, this has been a break in the routine that's not been a good one. But it has caused some people to drop back and say, do I really want to keep doing what I'm doing or should I go for another type of ministry or another type of job? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think you're going to see in the next 18, 24 months, a whole lot of churn, 
A lot of pastors are one bad news cycle away from retiring or hanging it up. We do a whole lot of succession planning, and a lot of that succession planning has been accelerated by this. People who thought they had five more years are saying, I'm right. not a digital native. I don't right. like preaching to a camera. Let's, let's stop a little sooner. So for a number of different reasons, I think there'll be a lot of churn. A lot of churn. All right. As a hurricane is churning towards the Gulf Coast, that's very apropos. William Vanderbloom, thanks so much for your time and your insights. We appreciate it. Thank you.